Good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, maybe even good evening in some cases. Welcome to our virtual session today at VM World 2020 on the evolution of cable networks. My name is Robert McIntyre. I'm with our business development team and our service provider group. And joining me also today is my colleague, Karthik Krishnan from our solutions team. So important upfront, uh, I've been asked to cover this disclaimer, uh, which simply states that this presentation may contain product features or functionality that are currently under development. This overview of new technology represents no commitment from VMware to deliver these features in any generally available product, although we certainly intend to. Features are subject to change, technical feasibility and market demand will affect final delivery and pricing and packaging for any new features, functionality, or technology discussed or presented have not yet, in some cases, been determined. So with that, uh, our aim as VMware is to provide you with a digital foundation that allows you to develop the applications that you need to develop, deploy them in any cloud environment, one, one uh, on-prem, public, edge, hybrid, whatever you need, and be able to deliver those to any device with um, security and the ability to operate and manage those seamlessly. And the way we help you do this is uh, a be able to adapt quickly to a changing customer and employee environment uh, through the use of virtualization and orchestration and automation tools that give you business agility, the ability to optimize operations and go to market so that you can do things at the speed you need to do them and tools to strengthen your security and business resilience are arguably more important now than ever before. Now, our portfolio at a glance uh, is uh, kind of five broad categories, app modernization, digital workspace and endpoint management, intrinsic security, virtual cloud network, and multi-cloud. My focus today is going to be on the multi-cloud pillar, and we are gonna focus on some of the challenges that we're hearing from you and talk about ways that we can help you solve them. With that, uh, I thought it would be helpful context to spend uh, just briefly a, a few seconds on the market dynamics. Um, these are all obviously well understood by this audience, but it is fair to say that, uh, you know, in the past, uh, we talked about Nielsen laws, we talked about billboard speeds, but a lot of these notions are being really put to the test uh, lately. And I think, you know, it's, it's no secret that you're seeing more traffic, more users and more devices than ever. Um, I think the headline here, though, is that you're seeing new usage patterns that are stressing your networks beyond um, what you've seen in the past with new peaks and upstream rates and Technologies like Zoom for kindergarten, in some cases, that uh, really have kind of pushed the envelope of what we thought was possible in terms of scale, uh, quality of experience, bandwidth required to deliver that quality of experience. Uh, and then obviously you're seeing new consumption models and applications being adapted by consumers at a faster rate than in the past. And all of these present uh, significant opportunities uh, to the cable operator. They also present significant challenges. Um, obviously, you operate in a world that has some very credible competition, and all of this uh, is things that you need to consider as you think about your future operating strategy and architecture. So let's talk about that journey. Um, the things that we're hearing from you is that you know, you're looking forward uh, in a world where Cloud native technologies allow you to unlock more efficiencies and performance from your networks. Um, you're telling us you intend to go much deeper with fiber. And in many cases, you know, the, the, the joke has been, you're no longer really can call yourselves cable operators because you're doing mobile and fiber and all these other technologies. And uh, as, as kitschy a, a joke as that may be, you know, there's a lot of truth to it. And not only that, but Wi-Fi, finding ways, more clever ways to improve consumer experience using uh, Wi-Fi technologies uh, in the last mile in the home for cell uh, backhaul and also fixed wireless access. These are all areas that uh, allow you 
to move faster and provide a better consumer experience, or in many cases, business service experience. And all of these require you to think about how to evolve your network. And when we think about that network evolution journey, you know, it, it's obvious that uh, cable has uh, evolved the network from the earliest days of a rudimentary TV antenna uh, through to analog cable, to digital cable, and and ultimately to, to broadband access. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, over an infrastructure that was never designed or anticipated having to do some of those services. So cable is the vanguard of reinvention and evolution. And when we talk to you, uh, in most cases, you know, we, we hear uh, the, uh, about a bright future where technologies like HFC, PON, small cell, Wi-Fi mesh, uh, and existing and potentially new MVNO models present tremendous opportunities. And the question you're all asking is, okay, how do we do this? And how do we do this in a way that avoids uh, vendor lock and how do we do this in a way that helps us maintain optionality? How do we do this in a way that helps us bring along the skill sets we've invested in over 20 or more years in many cases and, and help kind of repurpose uh, our teams so that they can help kind of lead the transition to the future? And we, we believe we have answers to many of these questions for you. Uh, and when we look at your networks today, I mean, the, the challenges may sound obvious, but I want to talk for just a minute about uh, what we're seeing. So the first is you're grappling with complex architectures. Not only do you run many different networks, as we just said, but you often run many generations of said networks. And in some cases, multiple vendor-based silos defined by you know, technologies like conditional access, network management, uh, CCAPs or CMTS cores, all of which uh, in some cases are highly proprietary. So you're not only dealing with a heterogeneous network environment, you're dealing with multiple layers and multiple generations and multiple vendors in that footprint. So the first step is looking at that architecturally and, and asking, okay, how can we find ways to modernize this and be able to, to manage these things in more of a horizontal fashion as opposed to silos? And that brings me to my next point, which is the operations that have been built and evolved around many of these silos uh, are uh, pr highly proprietary and tailored to those vendors and those underlying technologies. So where can we help you go faster? Where can we help you uh, operate uh, those, those environments with higher level tools and be able to do so in more of a cloud-based CI, CD inspired model? And then thirdly, uh, the limited scalability and agility that are inherent to having multiple generations of some of these older technologies constrained all the way down to that physical shielded RJ11 uh, coaxial cable. And when I step back from this though, and I think about where the big opportunities are and what we're hearing from you in terms of the requirements. So even when you, when, when you look at the, the network initiatives like GAP and DAA and so on, there's a lot of interesting work that's happening, but higher level, what we're hearing from you is that A, you want to address the facilities problem. You want to be able to look at these complex architectures, solid operations, limited footprints, old wiring schemes that take a tremendous amount of work to maintain and, and to change and adapt. And you're looking at this and saying, okay, how can we do more of less? How can we bring a more modular architecture into the facility? Can we use commercial off the shelf hardware so that we can benefit from the better economics and tools that are available in those ecosystems and be able to move much faster. The second thing that we're hearing a lot is you're asking about how can we rethink our notion of an operating or perhaps failure domain to be more aligned with what we see in the cloud. So we have the ability to um, adopt more of a CI CD type model Whereas today, in many cases, your failure domain is maybe it's a service group, but in most cases, it's what those service groups roll up to, which is often a chassis, which is often a, you know, a single point of failure. And that kind of over, you know, historically has dictated your failure domain. So how can we rethink that? How can virtualization and a cloud modernized model of thinking about these services with more of an application metaphor, how can this help us have 
more control over our operating domains. And then thirdly, uh, just talking about convergence and kind of removing some of the layers of complexity in this architecture, just like what we've seen in the network with the shift to more of a spine leaf fabric and, and using NFE technology so you can dynamically stitch services together in the chains. And the way we're thinking about this is, uh, you know, tech, uh, initiatives like GAP, uh, which will modularize a lot of the components and will obviate the need to make architectural trade-offs day one between fiber and RF. Um, you know, technologies like RFOG and other things are, are still out there in the mix being discussed. And we think uh, GAP, DAA hold tremendous promise to provide you with an architecture that is not just virtualized or rehosted, but is actually re rethought to take advantage of these cloud style operating models to allow you to go much faster. And so we think about the facility problem, we think about the convergence opportunity, we think about you know, that, that cloud CICD type model where you have tight control over operating domains, programmability, infrastructure as code, the ability to introduce changes very, very quickly and even do cool things like split testing, um, and then be able to roll back changes and be able to do all of this seamlessly with a common set of tools that your operations teams only have to learn once, not learn one for every vendor and every silo. So this is the problem statement, and this is where we're focused on. And when we think about kind of how do you get there from where you are today, one thing that's obvious is you have no choice but to start where you are because you still have to run these networks and you don't have the luxury of being able to start with a clean sheet of paper in most cases uh, and be able to rethink everything from scratch. You have to start where you are. And uh, the other uh, thing that we think is crucial is you need the ability to maintain optionality as you evolve your network so that you can do things on your own terms, uh, ad adopt the tools and the processes and kind of take an evolutionary approach. You're going to learn a tremendous amount on this journey. Um, but when we kind of break this down, like th the reality is today, in spite of all the talk about DA and gap and kind of some of the, some of the emerging stuff with FWA, it's obvious that the vast majority, of dollars today are still going into legacy devices. Part of this is because that's your footprint, but a lot of this is because a lot of these technologies just aren't ready uh, yet. And while we're seeing some success uh, with DA in particular in Western Europe, I think publicly, uh, and obviously Comcast and um, uh, DT um, and uh, or Vodafone Germany uh, have all uh, had some uh, experience with some of these things. Um, it's obvious that there's still a long way to go. And I think along those lines, um, when we look at where the dollars go, the vast majority are still going into legacy appliances. We are seeing some success with early virtualization, but this path has also proven rather fraught. And I'm thinking about the first steps into OpenStack um, which, you know, were strategically made perfect sense and open API, a, a flexible software layer written in a language like Python that everyone could kind of very quickly ramp up on and be able to contribute to and adapt to your needs. And the reality is those first steps with OpenSAC, I think demonstrated that that virtualization journey can be very fraught and very complicated and in many cases, very expensive. Um, and, Ultimately, those first steps failed to deliver on their promises. And we have learned, uh, you know, a lot of lessons that everyone is applying to Kubernetes and so on. But the reality is, this is still a long journey. And virtualizing uh, is a multifaceted journey. Um, it's one thing to virtualize and rehost. Um, it's another thing to figure out how to virtualize some of the advanced technologies that, that, that you need uh, to be able to deliver on your vision. Technologies like FPGAs and GPUs for CPU offload, TensorFlow processing units to do model training at the edge. There's a tremendous amount of work uh, along this journey. And we have done this. And we intend to share with you the best of what we learned and then thirdly, the next generation cloud, which is doing everything uh, often in a, in a container native way, but I think importantly, being able to also do things in VMs where you need to do them in VMs, um, but be able to have that common tool layer on top so that you can operate things seamlessly. And I think um, the true benefits of some of the technologies like DA and GAP, I think really require you to get to this next generation cloud uh, style 
architecture where you can truly converge everything, do it in a multi-tenant way and be able to um, adapt, uh, one, consume, uh, create and consume the telemetry you need to understand how your systems are operating and to be able to do the prediction uh, that you need to be able to do both in terms of service assurance and future capacity needs. But delivering on all this intelligence still requires a tremendous amount of engineering. And there are a lot of engineering challenges on that journey in front of us. And so with that, we want to get into uh, how VMware is playing a role in helping with this transition. And so I want to start with a quick rundown of our current service provider portfolio. Um, when we talk about your priorities, when, when you tell us where you're focused, there are kind of four broad areas. Um, the first is unified core. The second is disaggregating that edge, both edge compute, but also various definitions of the edge from a network point of view. Converging access. So this is not just PON and RF, although that's a big part of it. This is also rethinking the way that you manage the networking that supports that access infrastructure with initiatives like DAA. And then fourthly, business services, uh, and ideally all of the engineering investments that you make in solving these key problems around unified core and edge and access and software defining all of this and operating it with a cloud style model, Ideally, you can parlay all those investments into accelerating your business services opportunities. And, and that is where we come in. So we have in our portfolio, the ability to offer you a holistic approach uh, to this transformation journey, beginning with uh, basic virtualization at the VIM layer, um, evolving that rapidly into uh, the set of tools you need to be able to uh, start where you are, have maximum optionality, to be able to virtualize things on a schedule that makes sense to your business and be able to do so with a wide variety of options with respect to, like we talked about earlier, choosing the environments, um, being able to select uh, not only the virtualization technology, but also the orchestration technology, being able to choose between a VM, a container, and where those reside, be it on a uh, public cloud or in your own data center or in your own edge network uh, on something like a, a gap node. And also to be able to do all of that with the offload technologies you need and importantly be able to get you close enough to the metal with all of these cloud tools and being able to do all of that in a seamless fashion that will provide you with um, the ability to deliver on HA and CPU offload technologies and do that with one cohesive operation uh, set of tools. And so our telco solution has been proven in hundreds of uh, VNF scenarios and with dozens of customers. And now I'm going to turn over to Karthik to go deeper on what's in our current portfolio. Thank you, Bobby. Before we dive in further, just a quick introduction about myself. I'm Karthik Krishna, part of the tech view at VMware, driving the cable strategy. Let's dive in. As cable operators on board on this journey of cloud transformation, the following three pillars will enable them to innovate at scale and speed while reducing costs. Virtualize, and when I say virtualize, I mean cloud, with an agile, simplified architecture the VMware Cable Cloud enables a consistent platform to cloudify all applications from core to edge. Automating operations and deployment of infrastructure resources, network functions, and services based on policy, applications, and resource availability for private, public, as well as hybrid clouds across any device, in any network, for any application. Monetize, leverage our open platform to monetize current and 10G applications and expand market opportunities in wireless, mobile, and enterprise and remote workers.
Let's look at the VMware Cable Cloud solution. When you look at the stack across public clouds, head and hubs, access and customer premise, we have this three-legged stool that I would like to describe. At the bottom is the cloud infrastructure. It's a virtualization layer with computing, networking, and storage abstraction. It provides the same experience across VIMs and containers, a common platform that we provide for the cloud transformation. A key aspect that I want to highlight here is, is that the infrastructure has evolved recently to include support for container workloads in addition to the classic VM-based applications. In the middle is the cloud automation layer. VMware made multiple investments to include products that allow smooth management and orchestration of the infrastructure layer. It includes placement, life cycle management of VMs and containers in a multi-cloud fashion. The top layer is the cloud operations, which is tightly integrated with the infrastructure layer. This layer provides FCAPs capabilities, root cause analysis with machine learning analytics built in it. As you can see, the three layers ties in really well to the virtualize, automate, and monetize pillars of the VMware cloud solution that we saw in the previous slide. I want to walk you through the value that VMware cloud offers to cable MSOs. Why it makes sense to use VMware to solve your challenges. Arguably, operations is the number one challenge for operators as they disaggregate, converge, and move, to move the compute more towards the edge. Containers are a preferred approach for multiple applications, while VM is a good option for specific workloads. The VMware Cloud provides a common platform that enables operators to deploy and manage multiple Kubernetes and containers, provide a consistent experience with simplified lifecycle management. Scalability. So suppose you are to build a Kubernetes on bare metal across sites. How do you scale it to 100 or 1,000 sites while maintaining security, networking, monitoring, and centralized management. With VMware Cloud, you can run more than 100 parts per physical host, improving the underlying hardware's utilization. Thus, it saves space and power in the head end and hubs and brings uniformity. With the orchestration capability that's tightly integrated with the infrastructure, allows elastic scaling of VNFs and CNFs. The time to market is a key thing here. We provide an open horizontal platform that hosts a multi-vendor WAS partner ecosystem with VMware Ready program. The integrated blueprinting, deployment, and management capabilities built into our day zero, day one, and day two launch and operate model allow faster time to market for operators. Truck rules. Remote deployment and self-healing capabilities with leading reliability, high availability, reduce truck rules and need for on-site service technicians. Cost is a key factor here. Intent-based NFVI assurance reduces OPEX, flexibility and better utilization of hardware combined with improved performance reduces CapEx. And we'll talk about how we reduce performance, rather how about how we improve performance in the coming slide. Easy convergence. 
open and consistent platform where you can run various types of workloads enable easy convergence. Let's talk about how we do it. Agility, with a hypervisor, you can connect a new bare metal server to the container domain in minutes. How do we do it? By software, hardware, decoupling and abstraction combined with elastic scaling and oversubscription capabilities, which enable us to provide an agile environment. Performance. It's a critical aspect where VMware made multiple innovations. Empowered by virtual accelerator switch and workload acceleration functions, the VMware cloud can provide more efficient overall workload performance for containers than Linux systems running on physical hardware. The platform leverages DPDK packet processing allocating CPU cycles for efficient networking and faster packet processing to optimize workloads. The VMware cloud also employs hardware offloading techniques that leverages SmartNIC to save space and power. Networking, NSX, which is our networking stack, implements a single underlay network on VMs to provide end-to-end -end connectivity and management for both containers and traditional applications. Security is, is very important for any communication service provider. Run applications securely and efficiently in either containers or VMs by providing strong isolation operating system automation, and an ecosystem of solutions. Manageability is the most important aspect here. A VMware cloud solves the challenges of running containers on bare metal with a comprehensive, flexible platform solution to deploy and manage multiple Kubernetes clusters and manage the container host operating system. All these capabilities empower you to run traditional and containerized workloads on common infrastructure while ensuring optimal performance and preventing interference between workloads. Let me show you how this cable cloud transformation will look. See, the groundwork for wireline wireless convergence has already started in the cable access space. When you look at the wireless, operators are moving from 3G, 4G network to a disaggregated 5G RAN. Also, operators have small cells and Wi-Fi networks which they are trying to integrate with the wireline network. That's the backhaul aspect of it. When you look at the wireline, similar disaggregation work has already started there. Wirelines has both cable and pawn, and the DAA shift is in progress. Example, from CCAP to R5 and is moving towards 10G. We believe scale and operational complexity will drive the cloudification of the 5G and 10G networks. Operators like Vodafone Rogers are already migrating to VMware for a 5G cloud. The same platform can be extended to a 10G cloud and enable a fully converged network. Now there are many possibilities to virtualize different parts of the cable network from data center, to head in super hubs, hubs to access to the customer premise. It is relatively straightforward to virtualize the data center applications like IT OSS, BSS, and centralized control plane functionalities. But this is where the centralized orchestration and service assurance capability will reside. The head and hub 
There, the VMware platform can support data plane intensive and low latency workloads like VCMTS, you know, vSYN networks, uh, you know, routers and switches, and vCDN are some examples. Access, we already have solutions for 5G RAN and can extend to other wireless applications. Once standardized, other applications like DAA nodes can be virtualized in the future and we can extend to the premise using lightweight virtualization solutions. Let me show you how to cloudify the end-to-end -end network from core, edge cloud access and private. Here we take an approach to bring each service like broadband, video, B2B one at a time and utilize a consistent infrastructure to virtualize all the different components, consistent orchestration to automate the functions, consistent operations to monitor all the components. And when you do this, you end up using the same platform to manage, orchestrate, and operate different components for different applications in each vertical segment. And here is where you can utilize features like multi-tenancy, network slicing and resource sharing. The DA migration that has recently started is analogous to what is happening in the 5G ORAN space. The CMTS CCAP that delivers voice, video, and data services is broken into VCMTS or CCAP core, aggregation, switches, and routers, and the QAM video core, which are software-based and digitally connected to an RFI or RMAC5 node. These nodes have both compute and an analog piece. The disaggregation opens new possibilities to enable cloud in the cable space. With an analog piece out on the node, you can virtualize the rest of the components and place it on the cloud. In the initial phase, major tier ones have embraced the R5 architecture. But even in an RMAC5 scenario, you can potentially virtualize the software component. Initiative like generic access platform gap will enable that. Let me show you how, the, how to transform a cable network with DAA to a cable cloud. You see a typical cable network with OSS, BSS, IT, media is devi devices located in the core. Head and has all the devices required to deliver video, IP video, over the top, voice, and control functions. The hub is where the CMTS CCAP resides. And with DAA, it's now VCMTS, video core, SYN, and a controller. An outside plant has the DAA nodes and amplifiers. Here is a picture of how a virtualized cable network will look like on VMware Cloud. In the head end, applications like IPTV, CDN, over the top and multiplexes that we talked about can be virtualized with VMware Cable Cloud. But I, what I want to highlight here is the DA scenario where multiple R5 nodes are managed by a VMware Cable Cloud pod that consists of VCMTS, vSYN, and video core workloads. Now we can extend this to add PON, small cells, Wi Fi other B2B with SD-WAN, and finally fully converged with 5G or MVNO leveraged model. VMware Cloud provides a consistent infrastructure to support all these application VNF workloads. It is tightly integrated with a common cloud orchestration and assurance to scale and operate all the workloads. Thus, 
The VMware cloud allows cable MSOs to enable a multi-cloud with consistent platform from core to edge using simple virtualized and agile architecture. Automate and orchestrate a highly distributed multi-access, multi-services edge network and monetize new 10G and 5G services with an open intelligent platform. Uh, this is how the cable cloud transformation will look like with the VMware cable cloud. We can help transform your network to the cloud similar to how we have done in the wireless 5G space. Come and partner with us. Reach out to our team and we will lead you through the journey. Thank you for joining the VM world and listening to the evolution of cable networks to cloud talk. Thank you.